hey friends, this is Martine Williams and I am obsessed with all things Mompreneur Life and helping you to remix your priorities, your habits, your mindsets, and yes, even your relationships so that you can build a successful business without losing yourself in the process. I'm also obsessed with the killer turquoise and lyrics of the 80s and 90s, but that's beside the point. Girlfriend, you don't have to hustle 24-7, 365, and continue to sacrifice your health, your relationships, and your sanity to be a successful mompreneur. As a small town girl living in a lonely world to a six-figure mompreneur, I am here to teach you how. There is a better way, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for all of the how-tos, the encouragement, the life hacks, the success tips, and of course, a little side of tough love. This is the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast, so let's do this. Welcome back, friends, to the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. I am your CEO, Martine Williams, your Chief Encouragement Officer, if this is your first episode. I'm so thankful to have you here. We are um, doing some trainings and uh, episodes specific to direct selling, network marketing, um, social selling, whatever you uh, identify with as far as your business goes. And so we're going to continue on with that. And today I wanted to do kind of a leader edition and share with you how to coach and hold your team members accountable. Because if you're trying to grow your business and grow your organization, we have to know how to coach and hold our team members accountable, how to lead them know the way, show the way, and go the way, right, as as their leader. And so I wanted to kind of share the this information with you. This is some things that were very helpful for me as I was leading my team. I was one of the top income earners with my company. We were one of the top teams in the company. And so I've done this for over 15 years, and these are some of the things that um, really, really helped me. So the first thing I want you to understand is that people don't want a perfect leader. They want an authentic leader. People don't want a perfect leader. They want an authentic leader because, again, as you are building your business and if you're looking to build a giant organization or you're wanting to go all the way at the top, you want what you do to look like it's something that they can do. And if all they see is perfection, that you're a perfect leader, then they can't see themselves doing what you do and your growth is going to be stunted. It's just going to stop because you want to build leaders who then build teams, who then build leaders and then build, I mean, that compound effect. So people don't want a perfect leader. They want an authentic leader. And maybe authenticity, like maybe you're not sure what that means for you. Maybe you're not sure what it looks like to operate from within your own strengths, to lead like you want to lead, to lead like only you can lead. And if you're like, yes, that's me, I'd love for you to send me a DM on Instagram at martine31williams because I'm pretty excited about some um, mentorships that are going to be opening up for mompreneurs to really help you to illuminate, really illuminate your strengths of your personality so that you can eliminate perfection. You can eliminate confusion, frustration, comparison, all the things that goes into being a business owner. And not being able to play to your strengths because you're not really sure what they are. Or maybe you you kind of know, but you're not sure how to utilize them to optimize your performance. So shoot me a DM and we, let, let's chat. So what is a coach? A coach is someone who can come alongside you and correct you without criticizing you in a way that is negative. Have you ever had a coach, whether it's for a sport or maybe you had a dance instructor or a gymnastics coach, like someone who corrected you, but it was, it felt like criticism and it felt very negative and it didn't make you feel good. It didn't make you want to improve. It made you want to crawl in a hole and just isolate. So an effective coach is someone who comes along aside you and yes, they're going to correct you, but without making it, making you feel bad, without making you feel negative. Um, He or she is also someone who tailors the coaching to the person. And this is what I'm really excited about, having a really effective tool to tailor my coaching and my mentorship to you, to the person, to have the opportunity to really, like I say, illuminate your strengths of your personality, to be able to 
harness them and help you to eliminate burnout, help you to eliminate the stress. A coach is always someone, also someone who is willing to be in the trenches doing the work on their own personal and professional development. I will tell you that when I am looking to invest in a coach or a mentor, that's one of the like telltale signs for me is, are they investing? They're asking me to invest in them. Are they investing in themselves to grow? And so that is what a coach is willing to do is to get down in the trenches and that she or he is doing their own personal and professional development. If they're not, red flag. She or he is also someone who's emotionally grounded. Like they're not reacting to or getting involved in the drama in your company or in the industry or in what's going on on social media, politics, like all of that. They're not, they, they don't have time for that. And they're emotionally grounded. So they're not reacting to or getting involved in that drama. They're also someone whose goal is for you to win, for you to win, not for them to just earn money, earn prizes or earn incentives off of your performance. So these are like things that I really, really look for. These are things that I really want to encompass when I think about my own coaching and my own mentorship, mentorships and how I show up for people. So Tom Landry says, I am your coach. My job is to help you do what you don't want to do so you can become what you want to become. And I have had coaches that have done that. Like there are things in your business right now that you do not want to do. There are things in my business right now that I do not want to do, but we need to do them. They're part of the business. They're part of the process. They're part of the growth. And so you need someone who can come alongside you and you need to be that leader who come alongside your team members and push them to do the things they don't want to do within reason now so they can become who they want to become and they can achieve the dreams and the goals that they have for their business. Okay. So the first thing on how to is just remember that people first, people always. People first, people always. What would they like? What do they want out of their business? Do you know that for the people that you are working with? Now, if you have hundreds of people on your team, you're not going to be investing this amount of time and getting this much detail from everyone. These are people that are business builders on your team. These are people who want to move forward in their business, who are looking to promote into leadership, who are looking to get more out of their business, but help them to go even deeper than their initial response when you ask them, what would you like to get out of your business? Because very few people are able to define that. Very few people are able to allow themselves, especially women, to dream big enough about what's even possible. So if someone says they want to make it, ex- you know, make some extra money, okay, specifically how much? And then, okay, and what would you like to do with that? And how is that going to impact your family? And we've talked about this on a previous episode in this series, but really help them to evaluate the deeper emotional reason why they're doing this business. So people first and people always connect with your people and help them to see the opportunity, help them to see they're worthy, they're capable, um, they're able to do these things. So ask more questions to really help them identify and take an honest look in the mirror because they do have to be ready, willing, and able. These people that you're trying to move have to be ready, willing, and able. They may be ready, but they might be willing to do the work. Maybe able, but they're just not ready. How many times can I think of where I have tried to drag someone through their business and it's exhausting and they don't want it. They're, they're not, they're just not ready that you see the potential in them. You see that they're capable, but they're not ready. You got to let them go. So help them to take an honest look in the mirror. Number one, what's really holding them back? If they are not, if they're saying one thing, but they're not putting action behind it, what's really holding them back? Is it an unsupportive spouse? Is it their own limiting beliefs? Is it, they have a skill set that needs to be developed? Like what's really holding them back? Another question, again, why are they in the business? 
Um, a really great question is how do they define success? Again, people first, people always. So how do they define success? Not how do you define success for your team? That's important. But to inspire action, we have to help them to define what their success looks like. What needs to be in place for them to achieve that? Uh, what needs to be removed? What are some things that just need to be taken off their plate? Maybe some things they've been doing in their business that are just not relevant right now. We've been talking about that on this um, series as well. How will they feel when they achieve it? That's a really great digging into that more emotional why. How much pain and struggle are they willing to endure to get what they want? And this isn't necessarily mean physical pain, but there are going to be some uncomfortable things that, that are going to be required, right? They're going to have to stretch themselves a little bit to reach the level that they're wanting to reach. So how are, are they are they ready, willing, and able to endure those uncomfortable moments to get what they want? And then another question you'd ask is what will the impact be for me and my family, for them and their family by achieving it? So those are just some really great questions to kind of get a pulse check on the people that you're working with. So you can really determine is this someone that deserves my time? And that sounds selfish. Some of you are going to think, well, everybody deserves my time. And I'm here to tell you they don't. And that's not being ugly. That is just the truth. There will be people that say they want things, but they're not willing to put in the, the work to do it. And when they're ready, willing, and able, then you can come alongside them. So I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. So let's just hold off there for a minute. Okay. The second thing on how to coach and hold your team members accountable is, accountable is to know that they just want it to be easier. We all just want it to be easier. We really do. So help them to identify and set goals based on the activities required, not the end results. Because the end result, the promotion, the trip, the bonus, the you know fill in the blank there, the outcome can be overwhelming sometimes. And again, they just want it to be easier. So help them to identify and set goals based on the activities that are required to achieve that end result, not just the end result. If you've ever been on a weight loss journey and you're trying to lose weight and you keep it on the scale and you keep it on the scale, like it can be very, very discouraging. But if you can identify those key components to the weight loss for you to making healthier habits and you stick to them and you set goals based on them, then you're not going to get as discouraged. So it's the same concept with coaching and holding your team accountable. Uh, what are the revenue generating activities or excuse me, my coach used to always call them the big rocks. Like what are those big rocks? If we can identify the big rocks, it's going to be easier because they're not going to be wasting a bunch of time on things that just don't matter, that are not going to move the needle in their business. Things like setting up their social media plan, things like sales. We're in sales. If you're in direct selling, you are in sales. And so helping them to identify, okay, what are those big rocks around sales? What are those big rocks around sponsoring and um, helping my new team members uh, launch their business? So those are revenue, revenue generating activities. We want to make sure that they have those scheduled in because that does make it easier. Then they know these are the important things. All the other things are just extra. They help them to understand that successful people are just those who are willing to do what the unsuccessful person is not willing to do. Like I always used to tell my team as a leader, like, I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, these are things I don't like to do in my business either. But in order for me to be successful and to grow a successful business, I do them anyway. Because the perception is from your team is that you love doing all these things. You love your business so much. You love doing all of these things like um, making those phone calls or, you know, showing up on Facebook lives or Instagram lives or all the things that they're like, I, I don't want to do that. So be relatable, be authentic. Remember, they don't want perfection. They want authentic. So help them to understand that the difference between you and them is not, you know, necessarily that you enjoy doing these things. You're just willing to do them because you have your eyes set on the, on the goal, the end goal. Okay. Number three on how to help uh, coach your team and hold them accountable is to help them to slow their learn so they can earn. Seriously, y'all, we live in an age where information is at our fingertips and we can learn and learn and learn and learn and learn so much that they don't earn. 
I'm a life learner. I love to learn. My brain loves to soak up information. And you've heard me say this before, but inspiration without implementation is just inspiration. Inspiration with implementation is transformation. So they may be learning and feeling good and feeling like they're being productive in their business, but if they're not slowing their learn so they can earn and they can implement what they're learning, then it's a lost cause. If they're constantly consuming, they don't have time to implement. And I want you to think about this as a leader of your team, because if you're constantly holding trainings, but you're not allowing time for them to implement and have the accountability around the implementation, then they're just going to keep showing up for your trainings and they're going to feel really good when they get off. But you're not going to see anything happen on your team. You're not going to see the, the, the needle move. They can live in all of the Facebook groups, all of the groups and expect results. They can't live in all of them and expect results. They're in there. And for some of you, you're probably in them too as a leader, but you can't live in all of them and participate in all of them and be in all the trainings and expect results. It's usually our mindsets, not our skill sets that get in the way. So action brings clarity. Action brings clarity. Help them to take consistent, messy, imperfect action towards the plan, towards the goal. Because everything we are doing or not doing is showing up in our business and in our life. Everything you're doing as a leader, everything they're doing as a team member or not doing is showing up in their business. And it's also showing up in their life. So how can you help them to slow their learn so that they can earn? Okay, number four, track success. You can't manage what you can't measure. I'm sure you've heard that before. And sometimes it's a skill that your team needs to develop. And sometimes it's that they're not consistent enough to get the right result. If you're not tracking, then you can't see, okay, is this a skill problem? Is it they're just not doing it enough times? Is it they need, you know, someone to just come alongside them and encourage them and give them a little bit of motivation? Is it, do they need to change their habits because they've allowed some unhealthy habits to creep in in their life that's also spilling over into their business. They say do the right things and get the right results, but I say do the right things enough times to get the right results. And the only way to know that is if you're tracking. If you're tracking the success, you're tracking the numbers, you know the numbers to know in your business and help them to track their own success. You may have like a monthly tracker that you use uh, for your business to track those KPIs in their business. And you're tracking your team's KPIs as well. Um, maybe you offer like a skills assessment sheet quarterly to your team to kind of see, okay, how do they see themselves and their skill sets? But you have to get a good pulse check on your team consistently to know where are we at. And if we're not tracking it, then we can't, we can't impact it if we don't know where, where our team is at. So that is super helpful. And the numbers will tell you what's going on nine times out of 10. You can look at the numbers and it can totally guide your coaching calls, your mentorship calls, your team trainings, because you'll be able to see what's really happening on your team. So you know how to impact that and do a whole training around the area that you see as a weakness as a team. That's leadership. That's showing up and putting people first. That's showing up and coaching and holding them accountable. Okay. And the last one is communicate accountability weekly. Again, these are for the people, the business builders who are wanting to grow a business. This is not this person that comes in and, you know, sells something once every six months or once every three months just to keep her active status. These are people who are showing up for the training. These are the people who the numbers are showing you that they want to work the business or they have verbally told you they want to work the business. Communicate accountability weekly. Um, you can use things like Voxer. You can use Marco Polo. You can use Facebook Messenger, Instagram DMs. Um, I think it's very helpful for them to hear your voice and for you to hear theirs so that you can kind of convey the tone of what they're saying you can, and they can hear your heart and your excitement for their business and helping them to do the hard things that you're asking them to do. You can ask them things like, what are you celebrating? Or, you know, what is challenging you right now? And then always, always, always give them a call to action in between calls, in between communications so that you're keeping the momentum going. Things that are in motion tend to stay in motion. 
if they stop moving, if they stop showing up to the calls, if they stop show, you know, working their business, it's really hard to get them to start back again. So keep the momentum going by giving them a call to action. It doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't even have to be business, but it could be go listen to Martine's My Printer Life Remix podcast, shameless plug, um, to get some encouragement today, to get some tips today on your on your business. Go back and look through her episodes. Maybe you need to hear her story and that's going to inspire you to act. So it doesn't have to be go make 10 calls until you get, or go make a hundred calls until you get your yes, that kind of thing. It could be as simple as sharing a book, sharing a scripture, sharing you know a podcast or something that you listen to that would be helpful to them. But remember, they don't want a perfect leader. They want an authentic leader. And I'm going to end with this. Not everyone needs a coach, but everyone needs connection. Not everyone needs a coach, but everyone needs connection. So for those on your team who don't deserve your one-on-one attention, don't deserve, you know, because they're just not ready and they're not willing and they're not able, they still want to feel connection. So you still are going to be communicating with these team members. You're just not going to be giving them your undivided one-to-one attention. So you'll be still doing like your newsletters or your team meetings or rallies or whatever you want to call them. You're still going to be communicating with your team as a whole, but not everyone needs a coach and not everybody wants a coach. And you have to learn to match effort for effort. And I'm going to say this, and I really want you to listen. Stop chasing people who don't want to get caught. Stop chasing people on your team who don't want to get caught. It's hard, especially when you see their potential, you see what they could do for their family, but you got to stop chasing people who don't want to get caught. It's exhausting. You will burn out and you will lose your joy for leadership. So I hope that this gave you something to think about on how to coach. Sometimes that can be overwhelming to think about coaching a team. Maybe you're not building a team because you're so afraid that you don't know how to do it or that you're not ready. Ready is a lie. Ready is a decision, not a feeling. I can't tell you there's ever been a time I have felt ready, but I decided to be ready. And I decided to do what I could do with the information I had at the time to prepare for whatever that thing is. And by you listening to this podcast today, you are a little more prepared than you were before you came on to coach and hold your teams accountable. And I'll end with this again. People don't want a perfect leader. Your team doesn't want a perfect leader. They want an authentic leader. So go and be you, be your best you. If there's anything I can do to help you to illuminate those things about you that make you you, that make you super special, just send me a DM on Instagram. But always know that I'm believing in you always. Well, that's a wrap friends for this week's episode of the mompreneur life remixed podcast thank you so much for listening and for following the show it means so much to me and listen friend sharing is caring so if you love this episode and thought of some fellow mompreneurs who could benefit send them the link share this episode or take a screenshot and head on over to instagram and share and tag me at martine 31 williams we are connected on instagram right It's where you will get all the fun behind the scenes of my life and business as a mompreneur. Until next time, know that I am believing in you always. Always.